Hello, High Point Community Church. Welcome to your online worship experience. This is Pastor Austin Hill coming to you, and I just want to welcome you to this Sunday morning and hope that your week has been filled with encouragement. As we've kind of had a temporary change in our schedules and in our calendars, we want to encourage you today that the Lord is with you and that uh, your, your church family is praying for you, and we're, we're constantly looking for ways to minister to you in our local community. And uh, we're excited to be here with you today, to be able to worship our God and to do it together. And as we do that together, uh, we want to certainly give you a few announcements today during our time. One of those is that every Sunday for the time that we're apart, we're going to have a Sunday morning online service and worship experience designed right here for you. We want you to be a part of that. We want you to bring the whole family around and and uh, just like you would be at, in, in the church building, we can still be the church together even though we're apart. So we want you to uh, just sit around your table or sit around your living room and, and join in, participate with us. On Wednesday mornings, there's going to be a devotional that has been sent out by Pastor Tim. We want you to take part in those as well. We want, we want to encourage you to dive a little deeper uh, during your time away. Uh, maybe, maybe if you're not working right now in a particular setting or you're working from home, you need something just to encourage you. This is a great way to, to have that for, uh, for some encouragement. So we also want to talk to you about what kind of opportunities are going on as far as receiving meals or receiving assistance during this time. If you or someone you know would need some meals uh, due to you know not having your your job or not having a regular income right now, we want to encourage you uh, that Byron Center Schools have chosen to give out breakfast and lunch in bulk to anyone 18 and under or 26 and under with a disability. Now, the, the children receiving these meals don't have to be a, a regular student at Byron Center Public School. They can come from another school district, but schools around our area are teaming together to provide schools to kids who need them. And so they're, they're just asking for you to come and pick those up or someone that the children don't even have to be present to pick those up. But what a great way for, uh, for our schools to be participating and reaching out to our community. So we want to commend them on that. Beist Community Assistance Center will also be giving out meals during this time. If you'd like more info, you can look right here. Dave Buckley, uh, you can contact him. He is our liaison for those kind of things for local ministries. And he can get you more information on, on drop-off times or pickup times or you know what other ministries are available. We also want to talk to you about hand-to-hand -hand ministries. That is a local Byron Center community ministry. And they're still making meals for folks in crisis. That one is actually looking for volunteers from time to time. So if you'd like to volunteer you, you or your family, we would encourage you to get a hold of them. And for more information, you can head right here to this website. It'll give you more information on, on ways that you can be involved and how you can sign up. So as you know, all weekly ministries of High Point have been temporarily canceled as we work with the recommendations of the federal, state, and local governments. Although we are taking some precautions in our daily lives, we still encourage you to reach out to each other, to encourage each other and be the church to your friends, to your neighbors, to those you may not even know. This is a time that many people are looking for just a, a way of hope and looking for encouragement. Uh, a lot of people, maybe, maybe their work is their way of having some social interaction and now they're home because the restaurants are closing and, and movie theaters and different things that they may have worked at. So look to be a neighbor to those around you. We want to encourage you in that today. And uh, just give a phone call maybe to someone in, in our church congregation who you're thinking about and encourage them at their time together. Before we begin worship this morning, uh, we want to we want to pray with us. Uh, we want you to pray with us and just um, seek God and just to ask Him to be a part of this worship experience and to bless you uh, with His with His grace, with His love, and with His hope today. So pray with us, would you, as we prepare our hearts for worship? Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for how good you are to us, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, how you continually show up in our lives and how you continue to, to reveal yourself to us, how you encourage us when we need you and how you show your love to us through various acts, Lord. And we 
We know that this is a different time for us as a church, but we just ask that you would pour out your spirit to us as we need your strength, we need your peace, we need your hope. And uh, we pray that through this worship experience that we would grow closer to you, uh, not only individually, but as a church. And that when we return back together, that we would be as strong as ever, ready to go out and make an impact for the kingdom every day. And we pray that we would make an impact right now in our local communities for you, Lord. We would do everything we can. So we pray these things in your precious holy name. Amen. Well, sing with us today as we worship our King. Sunday morning and we wanted to encourage you and keep encouraging you along your journey through this crazy season that we're in. This is teaching number three and it's obviously um, continuing on in our series on Psalm 23 where we hope to encourage one another and edify the body of Christ and continue to look to the great shepherd of all of our souls for his encouragement in this journey that we're all facing together. As I mentioned, Psalm 23 in the first teaching, talking about the great shepherd of all of our souls who has us as his primary concern, who also uh, were at the center of his great love and his tender mercies. The psalm continues, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we saw that that meant uh, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, the one who provides all for us. The Lord is my shepherd, meaning I'm not. God is my shepherd. He determines my agenda and protects me and helps me along my journey. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and besides, beside quiet waters. He restores my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. These words 
that have blessed millions of people's lives, and if you're even thinking about it, it's probably been billions of people's lives throughout the centuries. Talk about a valley, and the reality is we're all in a bit of a valley right now. It's a unprecedented season for the church and for families everywhere, individuals everywhere, and we're all trying to hunker down and to um, make a good life out of a uh, life that's been sort of turned upside down. And so we're trying to encourage all of our folks, and I hope you reach out to those that you know and encourage them, maybe with FaceTime or a personal phone call, uh, something more personal and relational and we're going to do the same for our whole church family uh, to reach out to everybody and try to encourage one another and pray for one another. But this valley that we're all in, when Scripture talks about the valley that we all face at times, you know, life isn't always about mountaintop experiences. We're all going to experience valleys. It's normal, and, and we don't like it, but it is the reality of all of our lives at times where we face valleys. And we know the valley of the shadow of death is certainly not a pleasant experience at all. Uh, however, in Old Testament days and as a shepherd, uh, valleys were a normative part of the culture of sheep herding and caring for sheep because the sun living in a desert land would bake all of life, including sheep, and so having a valley to walk through would also provide shade for those sheep. Valleys also were a place where springs would, would flow and where there would be water and there would also be pasture land. And so looking at valleys, there's an important thing to realize about valleys, that there's a purpose in the valleys that we face where we can find new refreshment from God, where we can find a, a new way of living. And, and if you will, um, I know a number of people have had more, more rest lately and more time to uh, get away from the crowds, if you will. And, and I would encourage you in this season to look at this valley in a different type of light. We're looking at this valley, and obviously we need to be smart in terms of hygiene and and keeping our distance from uh, folks who are sick right now and praying for everyone that we find a cure. But to look at this valley in a purposeful way of saying, okay, how can I leverage this in a way that leads me closer to that shepherd that I seek to follow? Valleys can be also a time of refreshment. Valleys can be a time of replenishment from water to pasture land. And the reality is for shepherds, it wasn't found on the mountaintop experiences. It was found in the valleys. That's where the pasture land was. That's where the streams would flow, obviously being lower. But also valleys were a time um, and a place where uh, shepherds would lead sheep to get to the mountaintop experience through the valley. And notice that the psalmist uh, shifts his words from you are my shepherd, to even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. The personal pronouns of I and you and the nature of the shift that happens within Psalm 23 is, is pretty important. And it's poignant expressing the heart of the Father that he does want to be our shepherd. He does want to lead and feed his sheep. But that shift from... Uh, you to uh, to me to to uh, though I walk through the valley of sh of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for your you are with me and your rod and staff they comfort me. So a couple of things. One is valleys are temporary. They're not going to last forever. The valley that we're in now is a temporary one. Although it's scary and it's upsetting in many ways, filling us with anxiety on on a number of fronts. It's temporary and it's not going to last forever. A second thing I want to point out is uh, when the psalmist says, you are with me, you're riding your staff, you comfort me. God is not like saying, okay, now you're in the valley and I'm out of here. God's with us in the valley, which is an amazing thing to think about. Like he's our shepherd and he's with us in the valley. 
So he's there to comfort us and he's there to calm us. And it's our task as people to lean into him and to turn to him and to find comfort from him. He's with us. So it's temporary. God is with us. We're not alone and we will not be alone through any of this valley that we face. But there's also this other beauty, beautiful expression of the purpose of a valley as I expressed a little bit ago, that it can provide us a place of of shelter from the sun and shelter from those that would seek to attack us, to hunker down and to to stay safe for a season, to get away from uh, those elements as sheep would uh, flee from all the animals that would seek to attack them. The shepherd guides us in ways of righteousness, and sometimes that leads us into valleys that don't last forever, but it's a season where we can lean on the shepherd in greater ways. My prayer is that we would lean on the shepherd in greater ways. There's a lot of valleys mentioned in Scripture, and one of the one of my most favorite psalms, aside from Psalm 23, or in addition to Psalm 23, is also Psalm 84. And Psalm 84 is an expression of what happened in a valley expressed through Numbers chapter 16, talking about the sons of Korah. It's a psalm written to the sons of Korah. You might see that as a header if you look at Psalm 84. And Psalm 84 speaks about the sons of Korah, as I mentioned from Numbers chapter 16 and also uh, chapter 26. But the sons of Korah, it's told, um, it, Korah was the cousin of Moses. And during the time of the Israelites wandering in exile, they um, came upon a scene where uh, Korah was swallowed up and all those that were with Korah in an earthquake of sorts, and he was killed. We think we thought at the time that, well, his sons were killed along with him, but we see in chapters 26 of, of Numbers that the sons of Korah actually, actually survived. And so there's a number of psalms written to the sons of Korah, the fact that we can face awful trials sometimes, but yet God can deliver us, and the sons were delivered uh, through that expression um, from chapter 26 of, of the book of Numbers. We have a number of psalms that are written to the sons of Korah. Psalm 42, 45 through 49, um, 84 through 85, 87 through 88. Psalm 84 is, again, it's one of my favorite psalms, but it's a, it's a temple psalm, if you will. It's a, it's a psalm that talks about our praise to God in difficult times, and it talks about the valley of Baca. The Valley of Baca was a place when you would travel from northern Palestine into Jerusalem, you would pass through this desert region. And Baca, um, in the Hebrew, um, means tears. And so a valley of weeping, if you will. It's a dry place and a desolate place. But there were cracks, and water would seep through the cracks of the rocks, and it would look like it was, it was weeping. But the psalm is beautiful in its expression how lovely is your dwelling place O lord of hosts my soul longs yes faints for the courts of the lord my heart and flesh sing for joy to the living god even a sparrow finds a home and a sparrow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars O lord of hosts my king and my god blessed are those who dwell in your house ever singing your praise and i wish we could be together singing corporately we're doing worship you know, in our own homes and where we all reside. But it's still worship to the one God, the one true God. And blessed is his name. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. And listen to this. As they go through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength each one appearing before God in Zion. Zion is another name for heaven, God's heaven, God's earth, God's foundation, his home. As we talked about in the last video about the fact that God has is pleased to give us the kingdom. 
in the kingdom where there is no weeping now and there is no illness and, and all is repaired and all is brought to justice. That's the promise given to each one of us. And that's the promise given to us by our shepherd. My encouragement for you as we walk through this valley is to lean into the shepherd whose rod and staff comfort us. The rod that protects us and the staff that guides us as a shepherd. He is our shepherd and he deeply cares for every single one of us. A couple of other verses I want to point you to. Psalm 42 verse 1, which is another psalm of, of to the sons of Korah. And it's that famous psalm that starts, and you've heard it many times, as the deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And that's my prayer for us as a community of faith, that all of our hearts yearn for God and lean into him as our great shepherd. In Psalm 46, which is another song uh, to the sons of Korah, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give, gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in her midst, and she will not be moved. God will help her even when the morning dawns. The morning will dawn soon, friends, and we will be together soon once again. In the meantime, it's my prayer that we lean into the shepherd of our souls, that we lean into his providence over our lives, that we trust him for all things, that we choose not to follow in the path of fear, but choose the path of faith. And that's my hope for all of us as a community of faith. It's our great privilege to look to that shepherd, and, and I want to encourage you to do so, knowing these valleys are not forever, that God is with us through these valleys, that there's a purpose in the valleys, and I would hope that each one of us seeks that purpose for our own lives of seeking to retreat with God and to be close to him and to reach out to, to friends in need and, and see how we can serve one another in need. I pray that you're blessed and that you would seek God through all of this and that we, in the end, would be stronger as we seek to, to follow the shepherd of all of our souls. God bless. May God be with you.
encouraged by our time together and that you indeed look to the shepherd of all of our souls for your time of encouragement. Receive the benediction. May God bless you and may he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you as you look to the shepherd of your souls knowing he is with you, his rod and his staff to comfort you. Amen. Be at peace.